got the Levels device here. Well, this is actually the Freestyle Libre. Got the installer right here. Now the thing is, I don't even feel it, and I'm not trying to be some tough guy, right? There's a tiny little needle, and in that needle there's a filament. The filament stays, the needle just goes in, goes out super quickly. And I'm guessing because it's so small and because it goes so fast, you just don't even feel it. Alright, open up the app, get my phone ready to scan it. Boom. Stay tuned, keep you guys updated. This is the first day of wearing my Levels CGM. I got a workout in, I haven't eaten anything yet. It's now 1.45. I got this protein shake as well as a bowl that has um, some actual food in it. And we're back. I just downed my protein shake. I do anticipate I'm gonna spike a little bit harder because I haven't eaten anything today. Things that are working in favor of me not spiking are that I just worked out. And this smoothie has a lot of fat, a lot of protein as well, not just carbs. And it's a smoothie, not juice. And juice removes fiber, this still has some fiber in it. Things that are working against me is that I haven't had anything yet today, so it's gonna go straight through my system, get absorbed super fast, and this still does have a lot of calories. This is like 600 calories, so we'll see. I'm gonna switch the order tomorrow. Now I'm gonna have this meal. I got some chicken, got some steak, kale, cucumber, mushrooms, and sweet potatoes. Now one thing I was reflecting on yesterday is how useful having a device like a CGM is because of the quick feedback loop. So yesterday I, I ate two Ike sandwiches for dinner and I went to Spike City. I was like at 160 something, 168 maybe, and then stayed elevated for a really long time. Was way out of range for hours. And that's not good. That's not what I like to see. You know what? Now that I have this thing, I don't want to see those results. So it essentially motivates me to want to do better and to not have those days where I get sloppy. There's other things I, I measure, right? So body fat, body weight, I do that every single day with a bioimpedance scale. So if I'm going up by 0.5% body fat or down, I'm gonna trust that change. And that is reflective of my exercise, of my sleep, of my diet. But I still don't know meal to meal what's going on. I know the trend after a week, let's say. It's been about two hours since that meal. Did not go to Spike City, which is the good news. I went up to slight elevation up to 124 and now coming back down to a more normal range which I'm okay with, I'm happy with, even with the smoothie. That's not too bad. I'm all right with that. 6.30 and I got yet another smoothie, which is not something I normally do. The reason is I'm just in a rush. Judge me. I got the exact same meal as yesterday. It's the beef, the chicken, same veggie, the same sauce, all the same toppings. I got the exact same protein shake. I worked out around the same time in the day. I haven't eaten anything again, so I am fasting just like I was yesterday. And now, rather than downing the smoothie first, I'm gonna first eat the meal. And I'll be having the smoothie a little bit here and there throughout the meal. So, let's see what happens. I'm comically bad at recording my food in the levels log. I will often remember while I'm eating, which is why you'll see partially eaten meals as photos or empty dishes as photos, or I'll reuse yesterday's photos if it was the same thing, which it was in this instance. So I just reused yesterday's photos. Now I'm still hungry. I would normally go here, grab one of these snack bars. I have so many after our 265 mile bike ride. But because I got the CGM and it's holding me accountable, I really don't want to spike. And I also want to see, I want to run this, this very unscientific experiment to see the order of smoothie and food if that makes a big difference. Now eight o'clock, let's talk about the results. These were not the results I was expecting but it makes sense. Yesterday I had smoothie first followed by food and the smoothie caused an immediate rise in blood sugar, which makes sense because it's going straight to the system. There's no solid food slowing it down, rapid absorption. And then after eating food, you see another rise soon after. However, today when I had the food and the smoothie during and after, then I had one single spike that went higher and lasted a shorter period of time which makes sense because that first bolus of food was slower digesting. And then when you have the smoothie, you can't pass through as quickly. However, both of them are being absorbed at a more similar time point together. So you get a higher spike. But do also keep in mind, this obviously is not a perfect experiment, right? Because sure, I slept similar amounts of time each day, but last night I had alcohol and that definitely negatively impacted my sleep last night. I also worked out legs yesterday and I worked out chest today. Legs is a larger body group. Anyways, that's what I'm making of it at this point. But again, if you have any different interpretations, I'd love to hear what you think. Yet another 
snickerdoodle smoothie. I'm actually driving to the Bay Area today because tomorrow morning I have a track day at Thunder Hill. I'm trying to get quick calories and I need to actually finish installing my quick jack to raise and lower my car so I can swap out my wheels because my old tire is damaged. I don't want it to blow up, you know, have catastrophic failure on the racetrack. So let's get back home, get to it. And we are in business now. Quick Jack is working and now I'm swapping out my wheels. Had the smoothie about two hours ago. Didn't really see much of a spike at all. Could be because I just spent the last hour and a half doing car stuff, which has definitely felt like kind of workout in a way. That could be a reason why all the glucose that was being absorbed by my GI system was getting mobilized to the muscles and metabolize a lot faster. Damn, and now I need to drive all the way to the bay. Nothing too exciting has been happening with my blood sugar because after that smoothie, I've just been car stuff, packing, getting on the road. And I've been driving for the last three and a half hours now. I will sit down, eat a big meal, and I'm anticipating because it's a larger meal than a single sitting versus having multiple smaller meals throughout the day. Now, I'll spike pretty hard. We'll see what I can find. It's usually a challenge I can find decent food when you're driving on highways like this. But hopefully I can find a Panera Bread, grab a salad, or get something else that's not burgers and nonsense like that. So I stopped at Panera Bread. I got a Fuji apple chicken salad and a chipotle chicken avocado melt. It's like a half and half. You know, I'm paying much more attention to what I'm eating because I'm wearing the CGM, but it also there's times like right now when I'm just tired. It's, it's been a long day, action packed since I first got up and I've been driving and I don't feel like being that disciplined. So yeah, my sandwich, I mean, it had cheese on it, right? Normally if I, was, if I was feeling more disciplined, I would say no cheese. We'll see, I'll probably not have a very good response to this meal, because also I am very sedentary right now. Back at home, at my mom's place, I scanned my arm, scanned my CGM to see what damage I did over the course of the day. And this is wild, that Panera bread meal, it was the half salad and half sandwich. I spiked up 190 and I was out of range for over two hours, which is insane. That's one of the worst ones ever. As I thought about it, number one, I've been very sedentary the whole day because I was driving for eight hours. And then I also ate the food really, really fast. And then the last thing is that I didn't really have much in my food. So there was nothing else to slow down the absorption. Yeah, so when I first when I first scanned my arm, I, I, I was annoyed. I was, I was definitely not happy. I was like, this makes, this is fucking stupid. But then I had to remind myself that it's, this is all about learning, right? This is not about being perfect with always having every meal in range. Like that's that's just not gonna happen ever for me, for most of us. All right, I know tomorrow I'm gonna have pretty bad glucose because I it's already 10, 15. I need to get ready for bed, wake up by like four so I can head out of here by 4.45, get to the racetrack. As expected, getting a little bit more spiky than normal because of the low sleep. I had a little bit of food this morning, some blackberries and this chicken with whole wheat pita and some veggies and a yogurt tahini sauce and that got me higher than i expected but because i didn't have that much right so that's not just the food you're eating but also the quantity of that food that you're eating but uh here at thunder hill this is why i do this stuff man it's so much effing fun so get this Mark's been on this track, I don't know, several times. So I'm like, hey man, can I can I follow you? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'll go real slow, the first lap. Just, uh, just you know, show you the line. Four wheels on the <laughs> <laughs> We're through all the compound and now it's metal on metal. Now my rotor is also needs to be replaced. Kudos to Mark for helping me. Hero. By being a racing driver means you are racing with other people. And if you no longer go for a gap that exists, you no longer race with other people.
I think because I was having a lot of small meals rather than what I normally do because I'll have two big meals in a day, my blood sugar was mostly within range for most of the day, except for after breakfast when I had more food at breakfast. But other than that, I was munching every hour or so. Didn't do much vlogging last night. I was so exhausted when I came back. I just ate, did some puzzle with my mom and went to sleep. Now, when I'm looking at my blood sugar, I'm paying attention to a few factors. Number one is gonna be the absolute magnitude. How high is the highest point? Number two is how long am I elevated? If I'm elevated for more than two hours versus less than 90 minutes, that tells me two different things. And number three is gonna be the baseline variability. So when I am sleep deprived, as you can see yesterday, there was a lot of just like, not quite sawtoothing, but a lot of up and down, a lot of variability in the baseline before I even ate any food. Whereas if you look at today, according to my aura ring, you know, I, I slept quite well. You'll see it's much more calm and steady, that baseline. So yesterday's dinner, did it spike me worse than normal? Yeah, absolutely. And that's again, because I was sleep deprived. It wasn't terrible though, because I was only elevated for, I think, about an hour or so, which, you know, I've definitely seen worse. And then today I got a workout in and I ate when I came home immediately after. I didn't have that many carbs in that meal when I came back. And I only went up to like 129 and I came back almost immediately. So I'm pretty happy with that. The goal is just to have more insights and better tweak your diet and your life around your food, whether that's sleep and exercise, so you can be healthier and, and feel better. You're not gonna be totally destroyed by a food coma or have waxing and waning focus because you know, you're just exhausted after having a carb heavy meal. Hey, you know with this guy, Zygreen, the YouTuber. And uh, he drove my car. He's gonna be on his channel. You should go and check it out in the description. I gotta say, being a passenger in your own car was always driving it hard. It's scary, dude. <laughs> like, it feels so much faster. Like, there were, when you first started booking, I was like, I'm gonna die today. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, there we go. <laughs> Great work. <laughs> Obviously, Fenton's a great driver and we were fine. It's a very short. So every week I normally will have like one or two cheat meals on the weekend where I'm a little bit more forgiving and kind of eat whatever I want. So I got dinner with Fenton and now we're having some boba. And I like my boba, not too sweet, so 25%. This will probably spike me a little bit, probably like, 130 to 140 because I did have a meal right before this it is later in the evening but let's see what happens so Fenton recommended I try salted cheese boba for the first time just yeah. take that off and then sip it get the full cheese experience getting schooled on how to do <laughs> cheesy boba now you taste it uh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's all right. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little much. I didn't really record anything about my meals yesterday. I was hanging out with family from morning until evening and then slept early. This week wasn't really a typical week because I was traveling, because I did a track day. That doesn't happen every week, obviously. I guess the, the lessons here or the things that I'm noticing are that my level of rest and sleep, my level of stress, and the speed and quantity of food I eat is a much larger factor than maybe I realized in the past. And in the past, maybe I would attribute more to what I was actually eating versus these other variables. Yesterday I came home and even though I had slept a decent amount the night before, I was a little bit more spiky than anticipated. And even at, at dinner, as you see, I went higher than is normal because that meal didn't have that many carbs and it was an early meal. It wasn't so late at the night that my melatonin was suppressing insulin secretion. In terms of how my blood sugar responded throughout the week, this is probably a normal week. I am not super tightly controlled. I, I think there's a lot of room for improvement for myself and levels with the tight feedback loop where I can see immediately what's happening. That's really helping me dial things in. Overall, I can notice myself being more mindful of what I'm eating moment to moment, being more mindful and, and not wanting to see my blood sugar go wildly out of control. So I'm a little bit more careful as to what I'm eating and my sleep and my stress and if I'm eating late at night. A couple nights ago, I was tempted to have some of that Trader Joe's dark chocolate I love so much late at night, but I was like, you know what? I probably shouldn't. And I'm gonna be held accountable because I have this thing. 
So it definitely helps me. It's definitely a net positive. Big shout out to Levels for sponsoring this video. I love using their product. I find it super useful and insightful. If you want to try it out yourself, use that link down in the description. It's going to let you cut the line because there are literally tens of thousands of people on their wait list. And if you decide to try it, I hope you enjoy it. Much love. And I'll see you guys in that next one. Woo!